let's go welcome back welcome back to another black history month live with east pack this time with the incredible charlotte williams hello people i see you i see you coming in um so yes we're going to be talking to the incredible charlotte williams entrepreneur fabulous beautiful wonderful intelligent uh she's going to be talking to us about all things diversity and entrepreneurship um and it's going to be good hey there guys i'm trying to um figure out how i get oh cancel we don't want to end the live we want people to come in let's get her up She should be coming in soon, friends. Hi, everyone. I'm going to send you all waves, all you lovely people. What time is it where you guys are? Where you at? Where you at, girl? We waiting. Hopefully, she's on her way in. Oh, says so she's unable to join. Uh, let's try again. Let's try again. Eight thirty-two. 732 here. Hi. Hey, girl. You wouldn't let me join. I was like, let me in. Let me in. I was thinking, where is she? I was thinking, let me I'm gonna have to freestyle. I'm going to have to rap, rap a little bit, lie in the room. I've had to do that before when someone was really late and I've just been like, so I wasn't prepared for this. Hi, everyone. Um, hi. <laughs> How are you doing? How is it I'm going? Good. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay, I'm okay, you know. These days are really blending all into each other at this moment okay. in lockdown, but it is, we're, we're getting through. We are honestly getting through. I don't even know what day it is, to be completely honest. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> that's all I have to say on the mouth. We're surviving, <laughs> we're surviving. We are. But for the people here um, on East Park's live watching who don't know the incredible person that you are give the girls some context give the girls some context <laughs> um so my name's charlotte and i am the founder of seven six agency so we're an agency an influence marketing agency that focuses on diversity so we essentially pair black and brown content creators with pretty much all the best brands in the world be that household names to really lovely small um small businesses so yeah that's what i do i'm also an influencer i have a podcast yeah. and i'm a recent tiktok addict so yes <laughs> uh, honestly that app, i need to, I have to give myself time limits because i will be scrolling for oh hours just cracking up like it's so joyous which i actually really love more than most social media platforms right now do you know what i love about it it's like so off topic so i know we've got questions to answer <laughs> but um the thing i love about it so i'm taking off my socks i'm really hot because i've got my light on um, I love, I'm, I feel like I'm quite old. I'm, I'm only 30, um, 31 in like six weeks, but um, yes. I'm quite like an old soul. Mm -hmm. So social media for me, I use it in like an old person's way. And I wasn't really into TikTok and on my, my team, they're all quite young and everyone was like, yeah, make this video, do this, do that. And then recently I just went on TikTok and I found the cleaning section. Oh my days. <laughs> but the girls just be throwing hella bleach. And that's yeah, I'm not into that stuff. Like, there's this foam. I, I went to Poundland today because I have one on my high street, and I was like, right, I'm gonna get all the TikTok stuff. Mm -hmm. And they all throw this like foam stuff in the toilet. I have no idea what it is. They didn't have it, so that wasn't a go. But yeah. everything else, like, I found that those little tips and tricks and how to do my washing better. And I'm just like, I'm so old. I'm using a platform for <laughs> Gen Z people <laughs> to find out cleaning tips. <laughs> And you know what? If you find your gems, you find your gems. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
Like, I've been seeing something about these Amazon leggings that everyone is getting on TikTok. And I'm like, I really need to just go and get my entire life because the, the tips are there. Like, you they know, really they're there are. for a reason. We, should, we need to use them. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. You're talking about the agency that you run that is specifically about diversity inside the kind of realm of influencer. So mm -hmm. what, what is the, the issue in that world? What, what is the lack of diversity and how do we know it exists? Do you know what's really funny? This conversation two years ago would be very different to what it mm -hmm. is now. Because after last summer with the Black Lives Matter resurgence, everything's changed. The conversations have changed. We kind of all know what's going on. But before that, that's where the issue was. So mm. I've been in the influencer world for about 10 years as an influencer. Um, like, I used to have a blog. I still do have a blog. I um, used to have a YouTube channel. I've just, like, grown up in the influencer space with a lot of my friends being big influencers. I've always been on the sidelines. Um, but I've also been a marketer and worked on, in the influencer and social media space. So mm. I've like watched it evolve. But what we've seen is, you know, people grow, people make lots of money and campaigns have evolved and what they look like. And there's only kind of like one type of person really that has like in a group that has kind of benefited from the influencer marketing space. And when we look at campaigns, until recently, until like the last year, they've been very much focused around that one type of look. There's like that influencer look um, and that doesn't involve black and brown faces, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it's been really difficult. I've been really lucky with my journey, I always say, because I've always worked in the marketing space. So I've always had the most incredible connections with all the brands. I used to work for War Nails and for Hello Kitty and our, our marketing strategies were literally, both of them, collaborations so I've literally collaborated in one brand or another with every brand under the sun across the world so I've always had like that step in so I think I got a lot of my early campaigns because people just knew me and they knew that like, oh yeah. Charlotte would do that so yeah. I was I was loving it and I don't think I really realized until like there, I knew there was a problem but I didn't go really really like deep to the problem until 2018 when I went freelance and I was able to go to way more events and I was just like doing way more influencer stuff and I was more present outside of my work mm. because my work has always been very diverse and very um, focused about telling people's stories. Right. No matter if that's for Hello Kitty or you know, for a nail brand, whatever that is, that's always been my thing because that's just what I like. Yeah. Um, but then when I was going on to other people's campaigns and going to other people's events, I was like, whoa, how am I, yellow girl over here, <laughs> The, the only person of colour in the room, the darkest skin tone in the room. And I would just be like, this doesn't make any sense. Because at the time I had like 5,000 followers. So I'd be going to these events and I'd be like the representative for anyone who wasn't white and mostly blonde. Um, and I'd just be like, wow, that is such a marketing miss because I'm mm -hmm. not going to give you the reach and I'm not going to help diversify the demographic. So in my head, I was like, what's going on? Like, why are these PRs and marketers not catching up? So I kept asking questions and was just like, so what's happening here? And I've, again, mm. I'm quite lucky to know a lot of the PRs. And they basically just said like, oh, we don't have access to those types of influencers. So mm. my first one was like, the, the first word is access because I, that, that, kept, that word kept coming up. And I was just like, access is literally the internet. Yeah, like, exactly. Do you not have Wi-Fi? Yeah. Like, do you have like a pass <laughs> password protection? Or, I don't understand. And then the second thing was those which is that othering of like, okay, so this is our group of influencers. This is influencers. Mm. Like these, um, this like homogenous group of one, pretty much one demographic is an influencer and anyone else is a different type of influencer. Right. And that really got under my skin because I was just like, I know amazing fashion focused influencers. And I've always said this, I don't, 76 doesn't really work in like the urban market, <laughs> quote unquote. So we don't do like sportswear and, and like, yeah sports brands and athletic brands very often um because they do that well there's loads of black mm. and brown faces in that world what i always had a problem with is like high-end high street high street just anything fashion related and beauty's got better but a lot of beauty just wasn't using influencers that looked like me my cousins my friends and people that i see walking out the street so mm. that was my issue and i always said i want to create something that is for the mainstream and I've always I really we've done a couple of campaigns with some sports brands but I really wanted to like focus on us working with mainstream 
brands and that being like fashion brands so that I can show like there are amazing black girls who create amazing content. You might see it as like a niche, but actually they're mm. wearing your product and you're just not looking at them in the same way because you have a different lens or there yeah. might be an amazing South Asian girl, you know, an Indian girl, Pakistani girl who just, I don't know if you can turn on the side, so I'm not going to, <laughs> but who nails it and yeah. just does the most amazing things, but you can't see her. So I can, here we go. So that's exactly. what I essentially created. And like, what have been your kind of biggest wins or like biggest campaigns or proudest moments to date in running your agency? Proudest moments would, would be um, just like creating my team. We grew really, really quickly. We're two next month. And we, last year, grew from me and an assistant. She literally just got made an assistant from an intern. Um, and then we grew to six people like that. Um, Whoa. Yeah. And it, that was for me the biggest achievement, but it's also the biggest learning curve because I've never managed a team as big. I've only ever managed one person. So yeah. that was quite difficult, but now we've, we've got the flow. Um, and then my best campaigns, like most, I think things I'm most proud of, we've done two that I've really loved. One of them, I've obviously loved everything that we do, any kind of thing. But one of them was with Badoo, the dating app. And we oh, did yeah. a focus yeah. group. And it basically talked about people of colour in the dating world. And I actually have never used a dating app before. And You're lucky. I, yeah, I think I am. Because we just sat, I sat on this focus group and I was like, what is going on? And it was so, we had so many different people. It, we had a really good group. And so if we talk about diversity, we, we, I think we nailed it. We had different religions, different um, skin tones, skin colors, um, different genders, sexualities. And we just asked them questions about what their experiences has been. And we found that a lot of them, no matter what their skin color or their ethnicity or their um, religion, there's all, there were like very similar things that came up. Mm. So um, food fetishism is like the biggest thing that we found that every person of colour had been related to a food group or a food on yeah. a dating app. Hey, relate. chocolate boy. So I'm going to try and, if I mute my phone, can I still hear you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, hey, cho hey, chocolate boy. Oh, you're like sweet, like caramel. Um, someone got hummus, baklava, like, you know, there's a lot going on there. So that uh. was a really great campaign. And then we worked with some um two really lovely graphic designers to create some illustrations and some graphics and then gave that to Badoo and then they put it um across three countries on their blog and all on their social media and also in the app um so that was really cool and we did like a bit of Black Lives Matter education and supporting people of color so it was very much started off as a Black Lives Matter thing and then we were like do you know what this is actually deeper than that because we can see that we want to educate people on Black Lives Matter, but th there's so much going on within the dating world for any person of colour. It's actually quite a, like, triggering and traumatising place for a lot of people. And that's probably why yeah. a lot of people use apps that are specifically for their ethnicity or for their religion. And yeah, so that was quite interesting. And then we also did a campaign with Greenpeace last year. That was their first foray into influence marketing. Oh, and wow. that was really cool. And we still speak to them. They're just kind of figuring out their year um, at the moment, but we still speak to them quite closely. And we've paired them with some really great influencers for like future projects. And they've never worked with influencers. They only work with like, celebrities. And they also have a very white middle-class audience. And yeah, they know. were trying to like escape from that. So that was a really proud moment because I'm a big um, eco, like, I'm not gonna say eco warrior, but I'm into <laughs> climate justice and social justice and anything to do with, you know, saving the planet. And I'm a big fan of Greenpeace. And also yeah. every time I hear Greenpeace, I think of Glastonbury. So I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Cause they're yeah. Like so yeah, and they're my big moments. Looking kind of at the, at the sort of like talent side of things, what would you say that is the kind of the biggest struggle, particularly when it comes to black creators essentially making themselves like ready or available for brands to work with like where is it that they they lack I think the biggest issue for all creators and then we can pipe down is money so we're currently mm -hmm. doing a survey on pricing um for the influencer space and we figured out that there is a real lack of understanding 
of pricing throughout the whole of the influencer space. Mm. But when we narrow down, when we look at, and I think the stats were showing majority, the percentage was so high. I won't give like full stats because we haven't finished the, the report. I don't mm. think it's wrong, wrong data, but the stats for black influencers specifically and not knowing their worth and not being paid their worth are so highly linked. And also with South Asian influencers as well. And that was really high. And we we knew they would be, um, we knew the stats would be really interesting, but we had a meeting last night with our PR and we were going through some of the stats that we had to, to write a press release. And she was like, mm -hmm. whoa, okay. So I think one of the biggest issues is not understanding, first of all, the budgets available mm. and then linking that with knowing your worth and knowing what you can do. And I always say it, in this way that a white influencer might not know their worth, but a lot of the time they've been reached out to so often um, that they've learned their, their fee because people have, you know, like someone will say, oh, 700 pounds, 800 pounds, 650, 750, and then you've got your average. Yeah, Whereas exactly. black, black influencers don't, ha until recently, haven't been like the flavor. So they haven't been reached out to as much. Um, and same with, other ethnicity groups but we've seen this in highest within black influencers and black mixed race um but they um so because we have i'm saying they because i do i've always had the budget so i always knew my worth because i pay people the money yeah, exactly. so i've always known that but the general black influencer hasn't been reached out to may not work in the marketing space or the influencer space so don't know their worth and because they haven't had the back and forth they just haven't learned it so yeah. if you're not talking about money and no one's there telling you what you should be charging. You're just going to click pluck a number out of the air. Yeah. That's so crazy. And then a lot of people end up just basically being paid, not what they're worth essentially, because they just don't have the knowledge. But like yeah. you kind of mentioned this, this, the, the whole, like, you know, black influencers were like not the flavor, but now they are. And obviously a huge part of that reason was black lives matter. And I know, you were very vocal at that time and a lot of people were kind of like flocking to you for like education essentially but when things had died down that same <laughs> energy was not there and I remember you being like you know how can you people come here and follow me and all this stuff but then you're not engaging in anything that I'm doing and I wonder if that is a trend that we're seeing across a lot of maybe black influencers and content creators who you know, gain loads, suddenly loads of followers during Black Lives Matter and, you know, now people are sitting there real quiet and then that's probably even worse for, like, your engagement levels. And stuff uh, like that. So when I, I had, so I gained something like 22,000 followers in the space of, like, three days. Wow. And it was really, it was stressful. Um, I'm so lucky to have a team at, and I had the team at that time because I just turned my phone off. Um, no, actually, I deleted, I still had to use my phone, so I deleted Instagram um and then just gave my sister who worked with me the logins and was just like this is yours you deal with this i can't okay. if anything comes up that is like exciting and important um let me know but other than that like Gillian anderson followed me and, and did a post about me and i was like okay that's exciting yeah. she told me that and i was like Whoo! and then everything else i was like i just don't want to be part of it but my i had this like really quick influx of followers but before that i had such a great relationship with my my audience and mm. I had a really good engagement rate and I didn't do I, like I wasn't posting that often um like a normal content creator but I just had these people had been with me for the last like six years and we just create I could uh, probably name you like 3,000 out of the 5,000 people that had followed me um or eight at the time and um yeah so I had this relationship and then all of a sudden I had all these new people and I didn't know anyone and it just felt like I'd gone to like a new school and mm -hmm. I I just didn't know anyone and I felt like out of place and also the demographic was so different because most of my followers were black or mixed race um, yeah. and or generally people of color with a few um, white friends here and there but it was very um, non-white and then all of a sudden I just had all of these white women <laughs> who I could identify with and I could like I know I knew but and also like people who I followed for 
like 10 years and I've just and they now follow me and I was just like really overwhelmed because I was like mm. what what if they just don't like how I talk or my content mm. or like the things that, what if I'm talking about braiding my hair or my like my curls being frizzy and they just don't get it and then they won't like just be part of it and I found that the engagement was really good when I during Black Lives Matter resurgence because I was like posting lots of like learning stuff and educational pieces and I did a couple more videos but then as soon as I stopped with the educational stuff and I actually started doing my normal content that was normally just like a fashion post here or like an ad or mm. like me just like with my dog, they weren't interested and my mm. engagement plummeted. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Because you've come to this page. And I said from the beginning, my first post was, I don't talk about, um, I don't talk about race issues on this page this isn't what it is. I have a company that focuses on diversity. And if you want to like learn more educational pieces around race, ethnicity, DNI, go there. But this is just me. I like mm-hmm. post ads. I'm a beauty influencer. I have a podcast about sustainability. Like that's what you'll find here. And um, mm. I'll also tell you about the wine I'm drinking or like the food that my boyfriend cooks me. That's pretty much it. That's what you're getting. Um, so I was a bit upset, but then it, it kind of crept back up and it's, it's okay now it's not great but I'm not using reels so that's probably why it's not Mm. great um but yeah it was a tricky time but I wasn't the only one I saw so many people who had the exact same thing um so yeah it was a bit rubbish like how do you know how you deal with something like that do you know what I mean like when loads of people follow you expecting one certain thing from you and it's something that other creators don't have to deal with they're not necessarily supposed to be seen as educators and I don't know if you've kind of seen now all of these sort of like, and then not even just black, but people from marginalized identities, whether they're trans or whatever, having mm. to explicitly say on their account, I am not like an activist. Like I, I'm not an activist. I'm a makeup artist or a fashion blogger. And like, there's this sort of like expectation that I am an activist by virtue of my identity, which yeah. is just like, so, it's so crazy. And it's actually quite sad that people don't get to just do the stuff that they love because they have to do all this extra labor educating white people. Exactly. And what's actually quite interesting is I am actually an educator. (laughs) So Mm. I do do courses and I do do talks and I go into um, like universities and schools and companies and I talk about inclusive marketing strategies and I do do all of that, but I don't do it on my Instagram. Like I get paid to go and do it in a classroom or virtually. I don't sit and do courses online because that's not my job. That my, that's one job. And then my Instagram is also personal, but then I have like my paid stuff, which is mainly around beauty. So Mm. it was just annoying to be like, I don't do that on here. If you want it, you can pay for it. And I'll come and do a talk for you, for your business or for your school or whatever. If it's a school or a charity, I'll probably do it for free. But Mm. I'm not gonna do it on my Instagram because that's just not what we're here for. We're here for a good time. (laughs) And like, it it does kind of seem that for a lot of um black creators like it it does kind of seem like if if you are talking about these issues you know this is a surefire way for you to gain followers essentially yeah but if that is not your thing if you are into fashion or you are into skincare and you are black or a person of color and you want to kind of enter this content creation slash influencing world what would you kind of say to people for building those foundations i think just do it my biggest because i have a friend who um also she's also mixed race and we have kind of similar content and over the blm resurgence i was like really on it and she was really quiet and she was just like that's not what my page is for like i'm black like that's who i am i don't need to like share it with the world um she posted a few things but that just wasn't for her and she didn't get like that big rise and like surge of following but she's still consistent and she's still you know doing really well and i think Do what works for you because authenticity is so lame and it's such a buzzword, but authenticity is actually key. Like if you're not doing um, what is actually real to you, it's so transparent and also people, like we can see it and people are going to judge you. So you might as well just be judged on like who you actually are rather than like trying to like get the numbers from doing like fake posts. And also if you're forcing it, you probably don't know what you're talking about. So you're going to like, give misinformation and probably be brought down so I would say just focus on what you want focus on creating really good content following the Instagram rules if you're using Instagram or if you want to use a different platform and figuring out ways that you can create 
um, content that kind of cross platforms and like brings you traffic. So I'm a really big preacher at the moment for Pinterest. So um, okay. we've worked quite closely with them over the last couple of months and I've just realized how sick it is. And I didn't, um, I've always used it, but not as a content creator. So yeah. Pinterest can bring you, if you create content that people actually want to pin, it can bring so much traffic to your Instagram or your website or wherever you want to be. And you can upload mm. videos. I feel like I work for them now. But um, <laughs> you can upload um, like videos of up to 15 minutes. You can do like loads of stuff. So like for things like podcasts or, um, you know, you know like if you have YouTube channels and stuff, you can upload like videos that can lead to your YouTube channel or to your podcast. And there's just other ways to gain traffic outside of, you know, doing a reel every single day. So I think we have to think about we have to do like the old school thing where we actually just graft. I think yeah, we've been quite yeah. reliant on the algorithm for so long. And now it's like, I feel like we're going back in time where we have to use, like Instagram is getting a bit oversaturated. People are try getting bored of it. They're starting mm -hmm. newsletters, they're starting blogs, they're starting so many different things. Still using it as the base, but then thinking like, oh, what else can I do? And I think now's a really mm -hmm. good time to do that, to figure out what you're like, purposes what your selling point is and then kind of figure out the different routes that you can do things it's all about yeah. like that multi multi-use multi-platform situation so are you kind of maybe not a huge fan of constantly chasing the algorithm <laughs> and figuring out what it wants and giving it what it wants so are you kind of more of the idea that you should just do what comes naturally to you and what already serves your audience sort of thing i personally know what the algorithm wants and I'm not going to give it to them so mm -hmm. that's I just don't I'm not that kind of influencer um I've I've like dealt with it in my mind and you know there's so many people making amazing TikTok videos and reels that I, I've saved onto my phone I was literally talking to my friend about it a minute ago and saying like I've saved all these reels on my phone that I want to recreate but I don't have the time and also I can't do that I know for mm -hmm. a fact that I do not have the capability to do it so I have to pay someone to do it um so i i'm personally i'm just going to do my own thing right. but i do think if you want to be a successful influencer then you've got to do that so that's yeah, you've got like, to learn the yeah well it doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be that i've watched some really good videos recently that are just like their own thing but as long yeah. as you're using like the voiceovers and like doing it in that kind of tiktoky way you don't have to be like the the gen z savage dancers because that <laughs> is actually getting really embarrassing but so i tried it once i can't do choreography so i, I tried it once and i was just like this is definitely i tried it this is definitely not for me um but yeah i think you need to play the game but that's just knowing the type of content that is going to do well and um, how you can relate it to you not just doing that content but not just like copying, carbon copying something, but like figuring out ways that people are growing and like it's working for them and then figuring out what it looks like on your channel with your content, with your style and then doing it that way because that will make sure that when you do like continue, you'll, you'll be consistent because it won't just be like, oh, I did TikTok videos and like the TikTok mm -hmm. dances for five minutes and now I've moved on. It's mm -hmm. like, no, I do, I've always done my own thing, but I just happen to like go with the flow of the algorithm yeah and even in terms of just kind of existing as a content creator and also running your agency and being on both sides what are kind of some of the things that you've seen that you are like absolutely do not do this if you're an influencer like what is best practice and then what is worst practice as a content creator so worst practice and i cannot stress this enough is buying your followers it causes so much stress in the long run and especially if you sign to agencies and then we have to like delve through it and then have yeah it's just re it's a real stress so mm. don't bother because right now um people aren't really that bothered about numbers at the moment anyway they want content with great engagement so focus on that that's what i'd say um best practice i'd say um collaboration and networking is something that we don't talk about enough having mm. not like engagement groups not like you know sign up to this group and we'll every time you post we'll, we'll 
if you do a comment and you know there's 20 of us in here and we'll do that that's actually not very good don't do that it's but not. Like, no like um you can get shadow banned for stuff like that because if it's consistent and and um instagram can see it they're like this isn't real they want real interactions yeah so what you gotta do is make real interactions find people like it's social media be social so find people that like work with you that you know really if you were to meet in real life they would be your friend you know mm. interact with people online and create those like genuine like real friendships and mm. then use those friendships to like big each other up and and not in a way that you're using them in the way that you're actually supporting because you genuinely believe in their content and we found that the influencers that we work with that have that support network online, be that us as an agency and everyone that, you know within the team, like just loving them and bigging them up, or like mm. other influencers that they've worked with and, and spoken to throughout the pandemic or you know throughout time, um, we've just noticed that you know they they do really well. And I always use Glow with Ola as an example um, because he's my unicorn. He literally makes no sense. Um, <laughs> So I don't know what he's on now, but Ola's on around 7,000 followers. So he's still really micro, really small. But um, he just did a video, uh, a reel two days ago. And it's on, when I checked it this morning, it was on 97,000 views. Um, and that's because, first of all, his content's really good. Yeah. And it's really shareable. So that's one thing to note. But second, um, yeah, well, thirdly, but secondly, um, he has really good relationships with other people. So mm. people share his content because it's good and they like him and he has like really good conversations and DMs with people and he's got like really good relationships with other influencers and some of them are really big. Um, and it's not him using them. They have genuine friendships. They meet mm. up at, before the pandemic, they would meet up, you know, they're friends. So that really helps him because if they like his video, they don't share it every time, but if they like it and they love it, they share it and it goes to their massive like hundreds of thousands of people in their audience yeah and then they see it and then they love it so yeah that is my biggest tip and I, it sounds like it could be quite difficult but I just feel like if you find so as an example my friend Bianca um Bianca F Foley on Instagram she is my best friend we found each other in the like she literally slid into my dms like four years ago I was like do you want to go for a coffee um I really like your feeds and I feel like we're like the same and turns out she was like a North London girl I live in North London we had like loads of things in common we love the same thing it like it's come to the point where we now co-host with each other a podcast she's signed oh, to the agency God. it's like we just have such a great relationship and it all came from the fact that I followed her she followed me she took the leap and like slid into my dms mm. and then I was just like yeah you're like a really cool girl and we just kept our friendship so that happens all the time. And I have, I personally have so many friends that have, that we've created relationships through that. And I know so many people that have actually like met their partners through Instagram from that as well. So I think, interesting. but be careful with that. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, Michael B. Jordan, I will definitely shoot my shot in the DMs and, and become friends. You he's know, taken, <laughs> he's busy. He's on a yacht somewhere with his girl. Is he he's busy. Real, though? I feel like he is at the moment. <laughs> For now, um, mm. but yeah, no, that's a really good point on yeah, basically building friendships and connections with people. I've definitely found that like really helpful actually when it comes to sharing content or even asking people to share stuff as well. Once you've built a rapport with someone, it's so yeah. much easier to be like, oh, what did you think of this or share this or comment on this without it being like I'm begging you yeah, to like my content. Yeah, because um, people want to support. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, Christina asked in the comments, why do you think it's so much harder for non-white influencers to grow? And then I also wanted to add on to that, um, even when we are talking about um, influencers of colour, there's obviously a huge issue of discrimination in the influencer world of like, you know, the, the kind of stereotypical black influencer being light skin, mixed race, like looking a particular way. And like, for, for example, sometimes like, Me. <laughs> not anymore now, but like, oh yeah. But like, you know. Me, but with a looser you know, curl. If yeah, I had a looser gonna, curl, I'd be like the perfect influencer. Yeah, you're kind, you're kind of there, but like, you know, just, the, not quite. just a little bit. But, um, and it's really weird because I remember like, I didn't even used to like that sort of content or like content from people like that. But then my, my um, explore tab used to be 
filled with people that look like that. And I was like, this is so yeah, weird that I don't even engage in this content. It's much better now, so they probably changed the algorithm or whatever. Yeah. But I just remember for a long time, that's a lot of what was being pushed at me. And I think a lot of people probably don't feel comfortable maybe entering the, the world of influencing and content creation if you're a black woman, because it's like, it seems like there's a certain type of black woman yeah. that can excel in this just because of like beauty and the politics of beauty and what people choose to engage in. Um, so yeah, that was like a bit of a question slash a statement, but this like, yeah. whole idea of like, why is it difficult for uh, non-white influencers to grow their platforms the same way white influencers can? And what effect does colorism have on that as well? I feel like it's got easier to grow. I'm, I just feel like since, basically since uh, like June, May, June last year, everything's changed so everything I've been talking about recently I just feel like I have to like put that disclaimer like this was before now it's mm. got easier and it's because people are actively looking and if I can use my company as an example when we first launched the business we didn't get very many people we've always had work but we didn't get very very many people looking for diversity focused work I was right. just lucky to have really good contacts so I just did influencer campaigns um Whereas now we have people that specifically come to our company because they're looking for diverse talent. Um, right. I don't like to, to say things like that, but that, that's literally what, I, if we were to do SEO properly, that's what we would probably have to put as our keyword because they're mm. looking for people of colour who are influencers, who are good and can like slot into their campaigns and they're missing. But also we also work with a lot of agencies um, I think it's like 60% of our income comes from other agencies, our competitors, oh. because they can't fulfill their briefs because they don't have a network big enough of influencers that are people of colour that fit in with their specific briefs. So we, because we have our network and we've got over like 700 people in there now, we can really easily find people for campaigns and slot yeah. them in Um seamlessly which is quite nice and a lot of the brands don't actually know that we we work with them They're, this keeps happening actually we work with so many brands but a lot of the time we're sub um like subcontracted yeah, because yeah. they can't fulfill their diversity quota so um interesting feel, yeah very interesting so i feel like now it's an easier time to grow but the reason like the reason to that you haven't grown is just because of like the whole thing of unconscious bias, discrimination, mm. colorism, it all like leads into each other. So as an example, we've managed Instagram accounts for companies large and small for years. And there was one specific account that we, we managed and it was a really big brand, household name. And we noticed that whenever we put a darker skinned influencer on the page, it would Bomb. like there would be no interaction no engagement and we would have to do everything in our power to get the numbers up to ensure that and I'm so pleased that the brand that we worked with was so on it and they were just like between us between the whole like team we're going to send it to everyone and try and get up because we didn't want to see like that that um like disparity in the organic content and it would really annoy me because I'd just be like this audience is not looking for this person but we're going to force this kind of person on the audience so that they see it as a normal thing. It comes up on their feed that they can see a dark skinned black girl, you know, a mixed race girl, an Indian girl, um, like East Asian, South Asian, whatever. Different skin tones, different body sizes. And we'll, we did it in a very natural way. Um, so it wasn't just like the feed is now, which I've seen some brands do. The feed is now just black women. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> which is really weird. It was just like, it was just a natural... Um, they've always worked with different types of influencers, but we just like amped up a little bit and mm. um, we just asked for more content to be created. And that's a problem. So it's people not being used to seeing mm. that type of content, which for, for, for us is normal content because they're the people that we follow and it's normal to see a black or brown face scrolling through. That's, that's yeah. content. But for them, they were just, the people were just scrolling past it because... I don't even think it was like, oh, disgust, like, why are we, why is this person on my feet? I think they just didn't even see it because it's just something that they wouldn't normally look at. So they just scrolled past it. Yeah. Um, 
so I think that has always been a big issue um and with that the onus comes on the brands I would say because they should do as much as they can to ensure that they keep kept going because there's mm. there's been I'm sure you've heard this so many times in your like journalistic career but things like black doesn't sell so having a black mm. face is not going to sell the product which isn't we can see through Melissa's wardrobe as a prime example that is not true you know she has a black face and she sells Man. so I've seen her her <laughs> case studies um and she sells a lot um I buy brilliant. anything she tells me to buy I, yeah I same think, I haven't even smelt I'll go and buy them because she tells yeah. me to buy them that is I like... have like the um was it Pen Halligan's link up mm. constantly on my laptop I keep meaning to buy and I'm just but I need to go on her page to see what she wears because I just know whatever she wears I will like it She's, exactly. but what I love about her is I as well, that. she spans races. Like I have so mm -hmm. many friends who are black, white, Asian, like literally any from anywhere, and they all follow her. And I love it. People said at the beginning, like when I, I always used to push her, and um, I've only worked with her a couple of times, and I don't think she knows I've actually worked with her because it's it's been through some of the brands that we work with. But um. I think at the beginning, people were like, oh, you know, it's just the black girls that follow her. And I was like, no. Like, my friend Gira is Irish and white, <laughs> the palest skin tone you've ever come across. And she's not, like, she has this very different body shape and completely different height. And she will buy anything. Absolutely anything. <laughs> she even got her eyebrows done at the place where, um, where Mel gets her eyebrows done. So, like, it just shows that influencers are influencers. There shouldn't be, like, a race thing. It shouldn't be, you know black sells to black, white sells to everyone. It mm. should be a good influencer sells to anyone. Um, so I think, yeah, to answer the question, I think it was a lot harder, it's getting easier. But again, it's just to do with brands taking responsibility of actually doing, going above and beyond with the influencers that they work with. So if it didn't work out that one time, rather than just like not booking them again, just maybe mm. thinking about why it didn't, work and I think that's like something to note you know sometimes it the content might have not been quite right because you dictated it and that's just not what the kind of content that works on their feed or mm. you use the content specifically on your page not on theirs and your audience wasn't ready for it so I think there's so many ways as influencers and content creators that we can grow I think you black and brown content creators have to work a bit harder to be seen but if you do the whole post the reel every day or four days a week and you know <laughs> follow that algorithm then technically you should be seen yeah hmm it's really it's really interesting like I don't know I think the, the more that I am kind of in in that world and the more I'm kind of creating content like the more that I'm seeing it is it is so incredibly layered and there is literally so much to it and you and you sometimes you just never know and sometimes what your you think your audience wants they they may not want it or you may be creating something that yeah. they don't really like do you know what I mean it, it is like it just feels like constant trial and error I think in a in a lot of this with a lot of this content and stuff like that so I'm definitely learning loads but I'm also just like completely overwhelmed with like how much you have to do to be able to sustain that interest like it's a lot I think my biggest piece of advice for anyone who already has their following and, you know, I grew to 30,000 followers. I had like 31,000 followers, I think, or almost. And I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then slowly, slowly it went down. I'm now on like 29.4 and I'm sure that will go down to 28 um, unless I start making videos around race um, but or racism. But um, I was really upset about it. And I was just like, oh, I've lost my followers. And I was like, okay, Charlotte, first of all, chill out. Because you're not an influencer full time. And it doesn't, like, this isn't your, like, only form of income. And secondly, you don't even make content. So, like, why are you <laughs> upset? Like, I'm not doing anything for my, for my audience. Like, I've asked them what they want. They've told me. I've done nothing. I just posted a picture <laughs> once with my dog. And, that, and I was like, oh, that's, you know, they wanted the dog. And it was a, sh it was a rubbish picture. <laughs> Um, so I think you have to like put the work in, um, mm. but also like figure out what that work is and just don't get disheartened. If your following goes down, that's normal. Like mm. following fluctuates all the time. I unfollow people all the time and you know, that happens on a daily basis. So just don't be upset by it, but just figure out why you want to do it. So yeah. it shouldn't always be, um, 
focused around money um but then also diversify your income in a sense that yes you are a, are an influencer okay you don't want to start making tiktok videos you don't want to be on this like content creator role because i there's definitely yeah. a difference between content creation and content creators and influencers yeah. i see myself as an influencer because i have influence um but i don't create content like i can take a nice picture but i can't like create a really good video or whenever anyone asks me to do a video i'm like no like you have to you will have to do it and pay someone to do it because i just that's just not my skill set i can edit a video but i can't like a youtube video but i can't do this new video stuff that is like done with kids and that's okay because that's not my content and that's not what i make but i do make things that are focused around my business around Mm -hmm. female empowerment around entrepreneurship and like basically just I became like an instant business. I started my um, started my career in marketing years and years ago, and I've always worked for someone else. I went freelance, and I started talking about that and how I navigated that. I went freelance by accident because I was just like, I don't really like my job, so I'm just going to go freelance for the company I work for and just see how it goes. And luckily, it turned out okay. <laughs> um, but I talked that through with my audience, and they followed me with it. And then now I own a business and I'm like building a team and I have like daily struggles. And I talk to my audience about that. And I say, you know, we're, su- we're really suffering at the moment with efficiency because we're not in an office and we don't know how to like communicate properly with each other. What are you guys using? And I've, I get so many DMs. And I've had so many conversations with people about that. And that's what I see my page about, not about like, here's a video of me putting on a mascara or, um, trying on outfits as much as that's part of my life because I love yeah. beauty and I love fashion that would always be incorporated but that's not my purpose my right, purpose right. is I talk about my life whatever that means be that navigating lockdown with my partner be that redecorating because I'm obsessed with my flat at the moment because I, I don't leave it be mm-hmm. that um you know the work that I do um or you know mentorship programs I'm part of or whatever that might be but that's what I see my my thing is so I think Mm. if that's if you're listening and you're like okay that's me I want to do that then start making content that appeals to people around that because you know you might your engagement might be different it might not be the same like Ola has his six seven thousand followers and gets his engagement rate something like 18 percent and mine at the moment is like three which is awful and um well for me like for other people that's that could be okay but mine's gone down heavily so i can't compare myself to him because he works every day and creates like i saw him say he created three amazing videos and that's his job he sits there and he creates content and he's chosen that life um and he's chosen that career path and he's smashing it and he's grown really quickly in a year he's grown from 1000 followers to nearly 7,000 I'm sure by the end of this year he'll be on 100 so like he's crazy he's very good at what he does and he's still so small so um that's and that's that's him and I I was sad a couple of months ago because I was like oh my god oh my god like we did a campaign and we both did it and I was like mine bombed because um a few of ours did actually because we used the page partnership tool and it like messed up the I don't know if anyone's had this problem but it messed up the engagement and that is Mm. the thing because I've spoken to Instagram about it, but there's a recording somewhere where someone from Instagram, I mention it on a panel and she like literally retracts and then like looks away. So if you, I can't remember which panel it was on, but what, if you look for videos with me online, I'm sure you'll find someone from Instagram making that face. But um, yeah, I, I was a bit upset because I was like, okay, he got like 25,000 views on his video and I only mm. got like 700 likes on my post. And I was just like, but he really, he worked really hard on that video. And I just yeah. reposted a picture from last year. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's a real difference there. Yeah. Gosh, it's a lot. This world is a lot. I'm learning and I'm, I am mean, I'm enjoying it. Like I'm having so much fun. I think you're I mean, killing I it though. My job. Yeah, I, I quit my job in October and I was like, do you know what? Because I guess writing is my thing, right? So a lot of my content, it centers my writing. It's about my writing. Yeah. And, and I'm quite comfortable with that because I'm so used to just kind of being behind the laptop. I'm now thinking about 
like tools and ways that I can design my my writing for my Instagram and I'm like I'm having so much fun with that but also yeah I'm keen to do more that gets my own personality out on my Instagram page and I'm trying to figure out like what works and I'm just I'm just doing trial and error at the moment so it's kind of a, a huge learning thing but like it's it's been good because I think when the whole Black Lives Matter thing happened and loads of people following me I honestly thought that I was like they're just gonna go like they're mm. honestly just gonna leave soon but like they've just they've stuck around and they've been like good and they've engaged with it and all but that you've been consistent yeah it's the right you've thing, been really consistent so i think that's a pattern back for you because you kept them there yeah it's hard though because people you know people are fickle i get yeah. so offended <laughs> like when people just i'm like what why are you on following me but one thing i think i love about you and also christina's in this uh chat as well and like i just think everything that she's done is absolutely sick oh god this, don't this christina is smashing it i but... I literally I do her work workouts every single morning like the first thing I do when I open my eyes is I see the workouts that happened yesterday I pick one and I do it in the morning and like that is exactly can we not talk about day. it Christina yeah. knows that I pay I pay for her workouts <laughs> and I've done two I've been paying I think I'm on my third month and I no oh maybe even more than that I just I've gone into a bit of a slump during mm. lockdown where exercise I found it quite difficult to do um, yeah. I'm trying to get back into it, so hopefully I will. But I, yeah. I actually need to. My body is like, Ugh. but um, yeah. yeah let's, I, I've spoke about this with Christina last week, so let's just not just let's just not talk about it because she's, she's yeah. still judging me. <laughs> it's it's just it's incredible though, just how many people are now kind of just finding new ways to create business from Instagram and just from this world in general like I'm in constant awe and I'm always thinking to myself I love producing the content I love writing writing is great but like where does the business come into it and I, I would be like keen to know for you like wh why, how did you know that you know I'm gonna I've been doing this influence and stuff I know what marketing is like I've been on both sides I'm gonna just go on my own and start this business like wh what was that moment for you and and I what what do you have like, kind of what could you say to people who want to get into this world of business like what is a good way to do ideation what is a good way to test mm. ideas you know right so I'm going to start this by saying I'm in Aries so same I could just stop there oh yeah you're, where's your, your birthday's in April isn't it April 17th yeah I'm March 27th um so I am I don't do that well everything you just said that's not that's not me I am really spontaneous and highly erratic. My team, mm -hmm. we've had conversations today. Um, and one of my girls, I was like, talking about like how she, like far we've come. And, you know, she's gone from intern to full-time staff. And I was like, and you had to deal with me. And, you know, I'm really erratic and quite difficult to work with. And she was like, yeah. Mm. And I was like, what? No, 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 you're not meant to agree with that. And she was like, oh, God, when I first started, you were so intense. And I was just, and she just said like, it was a lot. But now she's got mm -hmm. used to me. And I was like, yeah all right <laughs> I was just saying it but you didn't have to agree but that's what I'm like so how it works was I quit my job and I so I worked at WA and I actually quit WA literally like a year I think it's a year to the week that they closed mm -hmm. so they were like naturally dying down naturally I think the mindset had already been like we're gonna close so I was just like I started this job, it's not quite what I wanted, um, and I'm quite expensive, because they're such a small company, and I came from such a big corporate company, so I'm quite mm. expensive for you to have, and I'm not really loving it, so I'm mm. gonna just go freelance, and then you can find someone else to, to do the job, who yes. is young, and will do it for not my salary, and I just feel like, you, I feel like I'm costing you money, so we don't need to be there. So we did that, and um, took them on as a client, and then I just, took on other clients because I had my blogging contacts and I put my out of office on at WA because a lot of my blogging contacts contact me at WA to be like oh can we collaborate can we use the salon can we do this and I got my out of office to say I'm freelance email me here um and I got two jobs within two days of being freelance so I was oh, like wow. sick freelance life's gonna be amazing yeah turns out freelance life is the hardest <laughs> thing in the world and you work way more then like any other time I just looked at the time actually for me to close in but yeah I worked yeah. really really hard I burnt out and it was really stressful and then I was like right am I going to go back into real work <laughs> because my freelance work was it was too much and it was actually it was a bit of a joke to be honest I just was working like 18 hour days at some point so mm. it was crazy 
Um, but yeah, do I, am I going to go back in house? Uh, do I need to go back into an agency or do I start my own thing? Like, what am I doing? And then just a few things happened. A few friends made some complaints. I was just really angry at the time. I think 2018 was my Black Lives Matter moment. And I was mm -hmm. like, there, there's so much happening. I think I saw things in the industry before the industry saw it. And I was just getting so upset. I was in frustration, tears. And I was like, I want to make a change. And that's why I started the agency. So it right. came out of like, do you know what? I'm just going to do it. I had no idea how to start a business. No idea like what that looked like. I just did it. But I'm lucky to have really good people who I'm friends with who have like amazing, successful, great businesses. So I can right. ask them questions, um, be that friend or a family. And they just give really great advice. Yeah. Um, my old boss was also Sharmadine Reed, and I had access to oh, okay. her finance manager and someone who can give me like all the like like tips for small business startups. So I was really like, yeah, I was kind of set in that way, but still had to navigate it pretty much alone because there wasn't really much out there for like working class non-privately mm. educated, well-connected people, let alone. A black girl so mm. it was just quite it was a difficult place to navigate but I feel like I finally got there and yeah. now I'm 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 here but um yeah I think I didn't plan anything I, I'm the worst person to give business advice I can give you advice of now of how to like run an agency and what money looks like and how to like do things because my accountant has like schooled me well but setting up a company I didn't do it like a normal business so I have no idea <laughs> Wow, that was still helpful though. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to be bold, basically, and that's what you are. Like, and you were frustrated, and you made change out of that. So yeah, good on you. But I would say have savings. That's one thing I didn't have, so I had to make it work. Yeah. And I um was very lucky to have a very great partner who looked after me whilst I didn't make money for like a year. So mm -hmm. that's just one thing. Just have like a year's worth of savings, just in case. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of this conversation. So thank you so much for just dropping so many gems. Like I have been mentally taking notes and I'm going to be implementing more or less everything that you said. Like Yay. this has been so, 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 so valuable. So thank you so much. No, How are you thank spending you. the rest of this evening? I'm going to finish off my wine. Yeah. And then I'm going to, I want to watch This Is Us, but I don't think it's out yet. So I'm going to go and watch The Wire. Oh, okay. Um, Mm. and that's it what about you i uh, i keep telling myself i'm gonna do some writing but i'm really not so i'm probably just gonna like do a face mask eat some food and then like read and go to bed basically nice. well <laughs> you know reading, reading writing it's close do you know what i mean like i'm reading a good book as well i just want to hurry up and finish it so what are you reading um girl woman other oh so good i read that in the summer brilliant yeah, I'm like, I'm, there's, I'm, I'm a bit, like, there's some bits I'm like... No, oh, it takes a minute to get into it. You need yeah. to get past, um, there's, like, one really irrelevant story. Get past that, and then yeah. you're, you're in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm working my way through it. It's, it's, it's a book. It's interesting. Loads of good stories there. But, yeah, I'm going to read that, and I'm going to go to bed, because, yeah, it's been a crazy day. This has been my second, like talk thing of the day oh my like, god my mouth well is dry as hell. <laughs> oh you're amazing thank you so much oh, and thank, thank you everyone you. who we didn't maybe answer all the comments but thank you so much yeah everyone. where can people find you can they just hit you up on the yeah. gram just seven uh, charlotte seven six seven six agency um for the brand and yeah that's pretty much it or the stylum on twitter because i haven't changed my twitter handle yet <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you, you so babe. Much for joining us on Thank East Pack Live. Bye. Later.